Design, production, and materials dance intertwined. Uh, it's a new approach for marketeers. It's a new approach for us to understand. Why is this little astronaut so happy? We are the storytellers. That's where we come in. You get in the hang of it. This is a boat that uh, is 12 meters long, and we designed and built it in 2003. It was something I'd been wanting to do for some time. It doesn't look very different to other boats, but if you could see it side on, you'd realize that it's actually very long for its weight. It's got a very low displacement length ratio. And we coined the word D, uh, LDL to define this kind of boat. There's a bigger one that's 19 meters long. This one's owned by a guy from Dublin, and he uses this as his transport around, north, <coughs> around northern Europe. And uh, in fact, these boats explore the area that is just outside the limitations of what's called a displacement hull, which is an ordinary, like a fishing boat or something. So uh, this takes you into an area where you can, in this case, cruise at about 16 knots, not burn too much fuel. So it's all about a sort of sailor's interpretation of how a motorboat might be. This one's quite comfortable inside. I had the pleasure of uh, making a trip on this boat from the south coast of England up to uh, where he lives in Dublin. I was surprised to find that actually the 16 knots had become 10 knots. And the reason is that at 10 knots, everything's very quiet. If you're in a hurry, go in an aeroplane, because this is just a lovely feeling. <laughs> and there were four or five of us on board for 30 hours, going from uh, south of England up to Dublin. Uh, the reason he goes at 10 knots is that he knows it does one uh, liter of fuel per mile. So we went up there on 300 liters, which is pretty impressive for an 18 ton boat. This just tells you a little bit about the background of how it works. The little curve on the left, the little stubby blue one, is the conventional displacement boat. And I, I didn't draw any more of it because actually it doesn't go anywhere. It will not go fast, faster than a certain speed. The green line above it is the normal answer to going faster. This is a dynamically lifted, what's called a planing hull. And you can see that although it's got quite, it uses quite a lot of energy to start with, there's a point in the curve where it starts to go very nicely. But in between the two, the red line at the bottom is your LDL boat. And it's that gray area that um, really interests us. It allows you to travel uh, a long way <clears throat> on a small amount of fuel. This is another one, which actually we've been on today. It's owned by this, <clears throat> this fellow here. And he built this boat, or had it built here in Holland. It's, a, it's along the same lines, as you can see, as the other one, too. But um, this guy is special, and um, he's a very important figure in the work that we do, because if you have an idea for a nice boat, and it never gets built because nobody can afford it, it's no good. So this guy is the one who enables the project. As it happens, he's also a very accomplished engineer himself, and he spends his summers making this boat go quieter, more smoothly, and in a number of ways which I can't go on to uh, describe here. But it's, um, it's a very nice, nice boat, and he's very happy with it. So uh, every now and again, I'm afraid I get taken with the idea of building a boat myself, not actually with my hands, but uh, this is one we did in the last couple of years, and it's along the same theme. This one's only uh, nine and a half meters long. It's all built of wood, as you can see. And it's, again, about exploring the land of low power and low noise. There it is after it was launched. It does about 12 knots flat out on a good day with a clean bottom and just a couple of people on board. But its real objective is to, to cruise, yeah, this small boat cruised a long way at about 10 knots. And when we left this dock in this small boat, we set off to do a 100-mile trip up to the Isle of Wight, which is in the middle of the bottom of Britain. Uh, and we had the most wonderful day, this magic feeling of sliding along. And we used 32 litres of fuel to do 100 miles, which is very creditable. Now, I know you might say, would it make a difference if it had burned twice that much to the economics? The answer is no. But what a satisfaction to be able to travel on a boat that is quiet. And we spend a lot of time and effort trying to make it quieter 
you can see that it is very long for its uh, size in that photo. A little bit of accommodation below, but you have to be of a mind that says, I don't mind that it's a little bit crammed inside because I just like the feeling of this boat. If you want more space, of course, you have to bigger build, build a bigger one in the same proportions, and that can get expensive as well. That says it all. That's 12 knots uh, looking aft on this boat and um, on a quiet river, and um, that was a great moment with some friends on board, and they all took pictures of that and enjoyed it. We do also, in that last one, use battery-only boats, and it's quite suitable for that. Uh, this one's uh, going, unfortunately, a bit too fast. This is doing 15 knots, and it only has one hour of autonomy at that. This was a few years ago, about seven or eight years ago. But uh, at 10 knots, which is, again, a good speed, it'll do uh, seven hours, so 70 miles, which is quite reasonable. Just stuck this on the end to show you that we do do other projects as well, but they're all based on this notion that really, do you really need that much power? And can you enjoy a slippery boat? Thank you very much.